All right, JC. Uh, Mr. Justin. Oh, hell no. Hold on. What? That's not on. Oh. The feng shui is off. Yeah, that's not a real candle, by the way. Oh, I know. It's, it's apparently a healthy candle. Really? Conversation starter. All right, well, JC, welcome to Over the Surface. Are you excited? Oh. Yeah. Are you good? Nah, yeah, I am. <clears throat> I'm excited and nervous. I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> well, guys, today I'm here with uh, Mr. JC. This is so weird. What? You don't, you don't, yeah, I don't know, this is weird. <laughs> what? What's your problem? It's good weird, it's a good weird. I oh, love weird okay, shit. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. All right, guys, well, today I'm here with JC Kalen, and he is uh, one of my best friends. Also, YouTuber, entrepreneur, uh, investor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. Keep going. Streamer. Oh, shit, yeah. Clothing line owner. Okay, I'll take fashion that. Fashion designer. Sure. Fashion icon. Yeah. The list just goes forever. Well, you stopped. You can keep going. <laughs> He's yeah. like, keep going. Thank you, you for having me, seriously. I got, I'm glad we got to make this work. I know our timings were a little yeah. a little off a little bit. I feel like interviewing you right now. <laughs> I thought what? I have so many questions. I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. I start off every, I don't like calling it an interview. I like to say a conversation with my okay. guests by asking them one very important question. Oh no. And you can answer this question however you want. It could be one worded, you can elaborate. Yeah, are you ready for this one million dollar question? Yeah. You better answer it right. I'm very scared. <clears throat> From one to ten, how scared are you? I mean, I just hope it's actually a crazy question, because if not, it's like... I can't wait to see. It's like, going to be very like nonchalant. Like. Can't wait to see your reaction. Okay, ready? Do you love yourself? Do I love myself? Mm -hmm. That's the question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love myself. Do you love yourself 100%? Do I love myself fully? No, no, of course not. I don't think anyone does. Uh, I love aspects about myself for sure, yeah. Okay. There's aspects, that, like it's, it's. I don't know if it, how deep this can go, but like there's aspects about myself that I like and there's aspects I don't. Okay. Yeah, I, but that's just like the ongoing thing of like. Just like growing. Yeah, growing. Like, I feel like no one, like there's working no on your final and level stuff. of growth of like, so like but, you, but is it is like say, okay, for example, Okay. This is like the first thing I thought of. Okay. I've always like had trouble with my physical appearance. Okay. Right? Up here, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Right? Is that not loving myself? I love myself that I'm in the gym trying to eat healthy and yes. trying to get there. But you're like not happy with the way like you look at the moment type of thing. Yeah. At what but point... you do love yourself no matter what. You just want to feel better about yourself. Yeah. At what point am I going to look in the mirror and be like, oh, I'm, I'm giga JC now. I have 24 pack. Okay. And like thighs that'll like make you quake you know I'm like at what point am I like gonna be like damn I love myself now and it's like I don't know I don't think I'll ever hit that I'll, I'll always be like the the kid that like never wanted to take his shirt off and jump in the pool I feel like you're a really confident person especially with the way you carry yourself you you are probably one of the most unbothered humans I've ever met in my life are you actually like really unbothered by certain things or like or are you just like, okay, I gotta like act like I'm unbothered so people like don't question me about stuff? Good question. Um, I feel like I am unbothered. Um, but I've been going to therapy recently mm -hmm. and he has explained to me how it is weird that I don't get upset at stuff, which made me really weird about myself. I was like, what? I don't understand. Cause well, one, I'm not a confrontational person. So mm -hmm. I think that's what holds back. So. I'll sometimes get like microaggression, you know what I'm saying? Like I always kind of like pull it off as like a, like a joke. Okay. I don't actually get upset at a lot of things. It's funny because I'm the same way as you. I'm not confrontational, confrontational at all. I do not like it. I if hate I can, confrontation. If I can avoid it, I would just never do it, you know? And like, I guess for you, you're just like, it just like goes over your head. I'm not, which yeah, is actually I, I interesting. I never blow up. That's why. Yeah, you my... don't like, you don't like fuse up and you're like explode or anything. Mm -mm. That is crazy, but actually. Maybe, but also, see, this is crazy. I was talking to my therapist about this. So <laughs> I retract, take a step back, and I'm like, I do my own thing. And a lot of my, the things that I do is work or like, you know, I, I stay 
silent and like just don't want to deal with it, I guess. Like you go, so like you just say, bad. like you say to yourself a lot. Yeah, I say to myself, I like, um. Have you always been like that? Because um, I feel like I re- like when I met you a while ago, years ago, I never got that vibe from you though, that you were always like to yourself. Like you're, you're such an outgoing person, which is actually surprising that you think, I guess you kind of are to yourself, but I you're also like a really it's, outgoing it's just person. Like getting people out of my life is like pretty easy for me, which is, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Yeah, because if they did something that like I don't really like, I'm not gonna be like, hey, I don't like that. I'm more of like a, you just keep your distance. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna like go and do me over here. Has there ever been a time that like you've done that and you like kind of regretted it? I feel like yeah, yeah. Yeah, a little here bit. And there, yeah. I feel like there's no one that I've lost in my life that like I regret, but I also always regret like not just bringing it up because it would okay. make everything so much easier. Communication is key to everything. So you so you think about that a lot. Yeah, instead of me just like walking away and being like, ugh, I don't want to deal with that. Yeah. I could have just said something and then it probably would have been resolved right then and there. But it's just like, again, it's the conf- it's the confrontation shit that's really hard for Do me. Do you think you've gotten like better at it at all or no? Because like, I mean, you said you like go, you know, you go to therapy, um, you talk about it. Is it like something you're actively trying to like be better at? I am actively trying to be better, okay. yeah. I try to tell people how I feel in the moment. It also happens uh, like with like my relationship with Chelsea. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times where I think about it but I don't say it out loud. Mm-hmm. So like if she looks good for like our date or she looks good that day, I'll think about it. But you, you know. don't say it. <laughs> no, I, I don't say it out loud. <laughs> and then she'll like be like, hey, like I, she like, she, she needs some words of affirmation sometimes, you know? And so yeah. I'm like, well shit, if, if you're on this, like this particular moment when you like walked in, like I thought exactly this. It's like, yeah. oh, why don't you just say that in that moment? And I'm like, I don't know. You're like my, my Fuck. brain read is, my mind instead <laughs> you're like my brain's yeah. working but my yeah. lips don't move <laughs> but i'm not lying so it's like yeah i hope that she doesn't think i'm just like saying it so it's um, interesting you live a lot i feel like you live just a lot in your head oh yeah it's just like which i talk to I, myself in my head well yeah well it's just funny because you are probably one of the most creative people i know and it's <laughs> you can for that one <laughs> no you are and and it's I think a lot of my friends that are super creative just like live in their head all the time and it's like you said it's like there's so much going on and there's so many like voices you know telling you this and this but you're like you just don't say it yeah does that ever get like really tiring for you like mentally no so you're just like used to it I zone out a lot telling you all that yeah I might be like something wrong with me Dead ass. What do you see? What? What do you mean? I'm very bad at like paying attention. I'm very bad at like, I'm honestly, a one track type honestly of Honestly, me too. Yeah, I'm a one track minded dude. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but I can I can juggle a lot of things. Okay. And I love juggling a lot of things. I mean, you got a lot of like projects going on, you know, you working on TO still, um, you stream, YouTube. Everything takes like but an hour and a half, everything. But an hour and a half? So you can do like six things in a day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The way you said that. So for the people so out there that fun. are just doing a YouTube video a day, it's like, you could do it all. It takes an you hour and a half. You could do all of it. Like when I started YouTube, when people ask me about YouTube, I mean, I haven't been doing it as long as you have, but I always say this. I always say, if you want something bad enough, you will do everything in your power to do it. Of course. No matter what. Like even if it's 30 minutes out of your day to work on something that you love, you're going to put in those 30 minutes, you know? Yeah. So I, yeah, I, I agree. It's like when I was, when I was living with you guys, I was doing YouTube. I started YouTube and I was editing my own videos. That's true. And I was doing, tw- I started once a week, but then quickly did to twice a week. Yeah. I was going to school. I was cleaning the house. I was a freelance makeup artist. I was a babysitter. I literally had like seven hats on That's at true. all times. And I remember waking up at seven in the morning, cleaning, going to school, coming back, being a waitress, coming back, filming, editing till four in the morning, and then getting up again in three hours to do it all over again, which was insane. I don't even know. I don't even think I could do that right now. You if could I do it to. right now. Anyone can do it. Any, everyone, anyone can do but anything. But it is crazy. Like, or seeing myself then to do now. It. You should challenge yourself. Do all those things again? <laughs> well, get put put six things on your plate. I mean, I got two big things right now. Good. So it's been keeping me busy. Good. This is one of them. I, yeah, this is good. I like this a lot. Yeah, I'm excited for busy. sure. 
I guess I kind of wanted to touch on YouTube a little bit because you started YouTube when you were, or you started like social media. 17. 17. Yeah. That's so crazy. How old are you now? 30? 30. <gasps> the big 3 0. I'm old. When you started YouTube, um, was it always just something that you like gravitated towards, like social media, or was that just something that you were like, it kind of like fell into your lap? You're like, oh, this is cool. I'll just do it for fun. And, and it kind of like landed. I feel like I recorded videos before YouTube. I noticed that there's people on YouTube that would post their stuff. And I was like, damn, I wonder if I could do this, whatever. And so, yeah, I kind of just, it kind of went from there. But I started when no, you couldn't even make money. So it was kind of like a thing it's like, I it's like a hobby? did to escape, yeah. Oh, okay. Was yeah. it to escape in the sense of you just were like not happy? Yeah, with real like... life. Yeah, escape real life. No, but I'm just Fucking saying. Ass. <laughs> real life was shit. It was yeah. growing up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Was it something that you were just like, I don't know what I want to do with my future. Like this is like you were like lost as a kid too, yeah. type of thing. And you're like, okay, let me just do this because this is what makes me happy. Uh huh. I was lost, didn't know what to do. Did, did you said you went to college, right? Yeah, I was in college. I paid for it myself. Wow. Did you finish? No, hell no. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I, I quit that. How long were you in college for? An, a year and a half. I was about to say an hour and a half. Felt like that, but a year and a half. Made no friends. I would watch um, movies during lectures. I sent them you were back that, on purpose. Damn, you were that kid, huh? You didn't care. Yeah, I watched Prison Break. I love Prison Break. That's a good show. Yeah, and I failed every single class. I tried to join a fraternity. I didn't, I didn't have a, a 2.0 GPA to, to join it. Because you're, you're really <laughs> smart, you know? And I feel like if you like didn't watch a movie and you like actually like listened, you probably would have gotten straight A's. Yeah, if I applied myself. Because when you apply yourself, I feel like you're honestly good at everything when you actually are focused on something. Yeah. But I mean, school wasn't for you and no, definitely. it really worked out for you. You know, I guess your childhood wasn't the best. Was that like a really big issue on like, was it like a self-esteem issue as well? Was it something you're like, you didn't like like who you were, or how you looked when you were younger and then maybe getting into social media gave you more confidence? No, childhood was good. Shout out my mom. It wasn't until I started college and then like actual work is when like my life was like kind of ass. But that's because like I would work very long hours to mm -hmm. make very little money. And you just like, weren't happy. And then I had that. to pay my college and, and that, that was failing. Okay. And then I had to go back to work to like make money to pay off something that I'm failing. Do you see like that fucking, it's like a, it was like a bad weird cycle, like, yeah. cycle of ass. Badass too, not good ass. <laughs> um, it doesn't even sound too bad, but it was it was bad in my head at the time. So I used YouTube as like a like oh this is fun I'll just do this on the side to make me happy and shit. So it was just more of like where you at where you were at in your life and you just weren't happy with it. It was never like a self image issue, right? You were like happy with no, who you right are. You were confident of, with who you were I was like, like as a person. I was like okay. I don't I don't think I had much confidence and stuff, but I knew I liked to work. I was like I was like a kid. When I was a kid, I would like print out flyers, make my own graphics, print out flyers, JC's lawn mowing service type shit. Oh, that's cute. And then like put like uh, flyers so on like people's doors. You're like a businessman from the start. And I didn't have a car, so I would have to walk the lawnmower to their house, and have, they would have what? to call my the house phone. And I was like, I'd be there in 45 minutes. And you were just trekking a lawnmower like down the yeah, road. Yeah, I'd mow a lawn. I mow. I, if I was lucky, I'd mow like two or three lawns a day, and I'd do it for twenty dollars. Oh my, how old were you? 14, 15. Aw, JC, yeah, that's, that that's really sweet though. I got a golf cart, a go-kart, <laughs> and then I put it on the go-kart. And, go -kart just, and, then and you just like went with it? Yeah. That's crazy. Well, no, this, the reason I was so stressed and like had a horrible like life is like, I, not horrible life, damn. <laughs> the reason I had like a horrible time in that like, yeah. that era of my life is because my family looked at me as like the star child. Right. Really. Yeah. Okay. And I would be, I would be the first person to go to college in my family. And they were like, "Oh my god!" And they're this like, is, "Oh my god, this is the one. This is He's amazing. gonna be a doctor." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so like, I had a lot of um, responsibility. I felt like. Is that what you were trying to go to school for? Was to be a doctor? Hell no. Oh. <laughs> Hell no. I only went to college because my family to make my family happy. Okay, but you didn't have like a major yet. You were just like taking your yeah. like the 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 general. 
like well, classes. I was gonna be an engineer. Say. I was studying to be an engineer. Oh, you were being okay. It oh was my so, god, it was so fucking boring. It was to be an engineer. I mean, being an engineer. It was hard is too. Hard. It was really boring and hard. Yeah, so that that's why I was like so like in a sense like really sad, um, and I, I didn't I didn't want to like obviously like make my family unhappy. I feel like I have had that pressure as well. Yeah. Because I'm an only child, and you know my mom and my dad were like, oh my god, graduate high school, you know. I did college out here for a couple of years, but then when YouTube took off, it was like, you know, I wanted to just work and make money instead. But, you know, in a way you feel like you're disappointing them because I'm the only child. I guess I am their star child and I yeah. I didn't get to do what they were like excited for me to do. So I totally understand that. Did they that. support the, the change? The switch up? Yeah. They were confused at first. When when I called my mom, I remember when I got my first brand deal, my YouTube brand deal was for $1,200. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, it was for $1,200. Yeah. And it was, like, this, like, app for a game for my YouTube. And so when I was living with you guys, and I called my mom, because I was making, at Toast, when I was a waitress, I was making $1,200 a month. Uh-huh. Like, probably at most, right? And I remember calling my mom and be like, hey, mom, so, like, I started, like, YouTube and making videos, and this company wants to pay me $1,200 to just talk about the game in the video. And my mom was like what is this like real and i'm like yeah it whatever yeah i don't know and i mean it wasn't I, you know i did the brand deal and stuff and my mom was like oh that's great like you know just do that too while you're going to school and like working and then i mean you know it just everything took off like really well so it just it was it was definitely weird like trying to like be like this is like a business and yeah even for me it was weird to to transition to into that because I was working, I was going to work and coming home and I was able to like turn off my work when I got home, but I, it's like you can't really do that anymore. I feel like especially you might like deal with that a lot because your brain doesn't turn off. You're probably thinking about everything up until you're in a bed and then you wake up and you're it's just ready bad. to go. It's pretty bad. But also it's like good because right, cause it's like passion. Motivates you and stuff. I mean, it's what gets me up in the morning. It's pretty motivating i always say this like when people are like trying to figure out their passions and stuff i'm like obviously the goal is to be able to get paid for doing something that you love right and like like you said if you are doing something you love it really doesn't feel like you're working and Mm -mm. it's 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 a blessing honestly like we are blessed to have this life i always say that you know being a role model online does that ever like affect you do you ever like are you ever like hard on yourself feeling like oh i'm letting you know my fans down or I'm letting these people down that watch me or do you always just feel like you're doing enough for them? Uh-uh, no. No? Yeah, no, I always feel like I'm letting people down. Online. Online, online the most. Yeah. yeah. Because, yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why. When you started getting that fan base, did you feel like that? Or? Yeah, maybe the responsibility switched over because obviously, like... It got bigger and, like, well, more Well, because, you know, obviously, like, I wanted to make my family happy. Yeah. And then, like, I got caught, like, damn, like, I got caught in this, like, whirlwind of, like, like, a, like kind of, like, a, a life where I didn't really enjoy. So I don't know if, like, the responsibility has switched over, and I'm like, damn, I don't want to let the people that, that watch me down, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I've been leaning on myself, though. Uh, yeah, I, I used to think it was the end of the world if I didn't stream for a day. That's crazy. I mean, I thought it was the end of the world if I didn't upload two videos a week. Yeah. Yeah, or you missed a Friday for K and J or any of that. Yeah, uh, it's like damn, it we're is, gonna like we're gonna like are we gonna lose our credibility? Yeah, no, isn't it crazy how much like stress that actually puts on you? Because, yeah. like I said, I mean I haven't been doing it as long as you you have, but like when I've missed a video, when I've missed something like a post, or I feel like the world is ending. Sometimes I'm like, oh my god, like they're like they're gonna be so upset with me. They're going to be, and I don't know if that's me just like overthinking everything. But Definitely. it's it is crazy. Yeah, it's like the, it's like the end of the world for you. But I think ultimately people <laughs> don't care. Don't give a fuck. <laughs> they really don't. Like, and I have to remind myself that. Yeah. Do you feel like you're ever like letting like your friends down, or do you only feel like that with the internet? <laughs> I feel like I show up enough. Yeah, I feel like I show up enough. I mean. There's times where I feel like I'm, I'm, I let some people like it's it's like obvious like when it's like obvious. Yeah. It's not like uh, like I don't know. I don't feel bad too much. But obviously, if like say I missed this today or I was like, extremely late, yeah, yeah, I would feel fucking terrible. Oh, okay. You know, okay, I'm yeah. not like 
Yeah, free, yeah, fuck it. I don't care. Um, You're like, I have a heart. I do have a heart. But if you ask me to do like one episode a week for the next seven days, and I missed like the seventh week, and I'm like, like oh what? shit, I'm like actually tired. It's raining. I'm so sorry. Like, I wouldn't feel that bad if I like. I feel like, I mean, personally, I, I always feel like you show up for me, and like you're one of just one of the realest people I've ever met in my life, especially out here in LA. And I appreciate that so much. I mean, I'm still in LA because of you. I don't know how many people know that. What? Me? Yeah. What do you mean? What do you mean? I'm in here. I'm. You're in LA because of me. I st- I'm stayed. Remember when I was gonna move back home? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were like, just move in with us. Mm-hmm. And then you talked to the guys, and everyone was like, okay, sure, let's do this. But like, if it weren't for you saying that, I would be in New Jersey, which is crazy. A lot of people tell me that. It's pretty crazy. That you're the reason they stayed here or something? Oh uh, yeah, there's a reason they're in the posi- the position they are now, type stuff. Yeah, and that's amazing. Like that's I, cool. and it's it's crazy because I feel like sometimes you like. You forget about it, and for you're sure. like, you're like, wow, wait, I I did do that for them. Uh, does that put pressure on you at all? Yeah, um, I have a problem with saying no. So there's that. <laughs> you're like, so that's the first issue. <laughs> that's the first issue. Um, but I do like a lot of things on my plate, so I don't mind helping a lot. Does it put pressure on me? No. At least I don't let it put pressure on me. I'd say. I'm glad you're still in LA, Franny. It's just so, I don't know. I think about how my life has panned out and I really do think everything yeah, happens for a reason. For you know? sure. And I think good things happen to good people. I believe in karma. Me too. All of that stuff. You're like a really yeah. positive person, honestly. Yeah, that's important to be. Yeah. Right? It's important so to be. So being positive brings positive things and positive energy. And I think mm-hmm. that's why you are blessed with what you have and you're blessed with, you know, the people around you and... You get to work with your friends, which is so cool all the time. Is that something you've always wanted to do? Like kind of just like build like a business or an empire with just like your friends? Yeah, for sure. Because I think Um, that's really cool. Yeah, I feel like I've always lived my life. It's like, why do anything else than what you exactly want to do? Like that's the ultimate question. Yeah. Like why would you do anything but what you actually want to do? I get it. Some people have to like make like a living and stuff, but like... You know, do something on the side that you really like, you know, and yeah, then that'll yeah. hopefully maybe turn into something. Um, I guess I have all these like hats and like I know what mm-hmm. I'm doing in life now. And as a kid, like people were like, what, would, what do you want to do when you're older? And it's like, damn, I don't even know. I kind of want to just do Everything. like what I want, <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever that entails. Yeah. This is awesome. I love this. Why don't we just talk like this in person without cameras? I, I think Kian said that too. Kian was like, we should do more of this. How's that like? You what? Know, the whole like, how's that like the whole Ken and JC stuff. How's that how's going? That like what? <laughs> annoying? Yeah, it's annoying. <laughs> dude, Ken's like a fucking huge five year old, dude. <laughs> oh my god, that's he's so ridiculous funny. sometimes. He's fun to work with though. When he's on his shit, he's on his shit. Oh my god, no, but I mean I love you guys together. Yeah, we're still we're yeah. literally still functioning after how long? Almost nine years now. So I don't know how we did it, but we, we're oh, still I, doing it. I thought Keenan JC was nine years. I was like, no, that was like, that was O2L2 now? No, or King Kenan, J. Nine years? Nine years long. Wait, really? It started in 2014. Are you guys going to have like a 10 year anniversary? You might have to. We might do something crazy. That's crazy. We're going to have to do something crazy, yeah. Because O2L ending has already passed for the 10 years. That's crazy, but you've been in Keenan JC for 10 years. Dude, what? it's like a marriage. <laughs> kind of just stuck there, dude. Which phase was your favorite, do you think? Uh, when we lived with you, yeah. Really? I love that That was phase. your favorite? Wow, I'm honored that that was your favorite. Yeah, that was one of my favorites for sure. One of your favorite eras. Yeah. Would you ever live in a house like that again? Like, if, if you could do it again with, like, the same people? <sighs> yeah. Yeah, for You sure. would? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Really? Yeah, for sure, because... I mean, like I like I get it. Like I'm getting like we're old and shit. We have to think about other stuff. But yeah, I I'm very much so the guy that likes to like wake up and have like people to talk to and stuff. Okay. Yeah, I mean I, I like my alone time, but that's my room. Let's fill up the house. Put as many people. Well, in. not okay. No, <laughs> I mean, obviously there's a limit, but yeah. Yeah. Was there ever a time that you thought you were gonna quit YouTube? Nah, no. Like that's a simple. That answer. never was a question. No, never. Wow, that's great. Never. Was it weird? 
I guess not weird for you because you said that you, you know, YouTube was an escape for you because that transition from normal life to YouTube was probably, you know, a confidence booster, probably made you feel a lot better about yourself and like where you were going. Yeah. So it was probably a good transition for you or was it weird to manage at first? You mean YouTube and then like just quitting everything? No, going from normal life to YouTube. Well, normal life in my head is like Texas. And then like when I YouTube life, I guess, quote unquote, is when I moved to California. So that was a big transition. Yes. It was, a bit, was it hard? Oh my God. I had to quit everything. I quit my job. I told my mom I was moving out and I quit. I, I was like, I, and I'm dropping out of college. She's, uh, she, yeah, she, she hated it. Oh, she was. Okay. So she, she was like, what are you thinking? You're crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Like. So you took your leap of faith and you were yeah. like, I'm, I'm gone. And at that point I was 20. So like she couldn't say no. She could have, but like, what? Like, you know, she's, su she's supportive enough to be like, okay, like I'm here when you're in a year when yeah. you're like, when it runs out, whatever it was, everyone in my family said that it was going to be like a, like a phase and you're going to come back. Yeah. It was going to be a phase. Yeah. Like it won't last forever. And in my head, it's like, it's got, yeah, it will last forever. Like even if YouTube shuts down tomorrow, what am I gonna sit in my bed? No, yeah, that's I want to move on to something else that's similar. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, Did you it, have? You know. Oh, yeah. sorry. What were you gonna say? I don't know. I'm just think. Just thinking about all that. Like, it, they would always tell me like it's gonna like you never. It's gonna end soon. You're getting old. It's gonna end soon. This and that. And it's like, dude, it's not. It's it's not. It's not YouTube that's keeping me afloat. It's not all any of that. It's like. Yeah. It's just like what I'm, what I can do with anything that's in front of me. Yeah. So you're like, I'm going to make, make it work. I can make it work. Yeah. yeah. So did you move out here? Did you move out here with like a good amount of money from like YouTube already or no? Uh, were you no, like, I probably moved out here with like $2,500 in my bank account. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I think that's how much I had to. When I moved out here. Yeah. I was living on the couch. Okay. With Kian. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. It was four guys living in one bedroom apartment. Oh wait, yeah, no, yeah, Kian has told me that before, I forgot, yeah. but, oh, but you were on a couch. Yeah. Damn. Well, with, like, we, separate yeah, couches. Yeah, you guys, yeah. It wasn't like we were, like, cuddling, like, big spoon, little spoon. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, like, my wow. closet was, like, the broom closet. Damn. Yeah. And That's we edited crazy. on a table this That's big, crazy. two Mac, Macs or whatever, and the kitchen. It wasn't even, like, a dining room, it was, like, the kitchen. I feel like moments like that just, I don't know, I, I appreciate a lot, you know, coming from a place of not having a lot of money and like li experiencing like, you know, living on a couch and stuff because yeah. it definitely makes me appreciate my life a lot now because I didn't have that when I moved out here. You know, I struggled a lot. You, you guys clearly, you know, weren't in the best situation either. You were just trying to make it out here. And, yeah. You know, I think now when someone even tells me that they're struggling or like, damn, like I'm just trying to get my feet on the ground. I want to do this. I like, I feel them so hard. I wish I had a mentor growing up. That'd be cool. But isn't it kind of, I don't know, not, I guess cool, but it's like, you're like a mentor to so many people now. I know, but I want one. You can find one still. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. We can, we can find you a mentor. Who would be like your dream mentor right now? Oh, um... To, like, learn their ways. And Gary like, Vee. I don't even know who that is. <laughs> Gary Vee? Mm -hmm. Who is that? He's a motivational speaker, entrepreneur guy, like... He... Does he, like, make videos and stuff? Uh, yeah. Like, YouTube videos? Mm-hmm. Is that what you do in your alone time? Uh, watch him. I listen to some of his audio stuff, audio things. Podcast yeah, yeah. stuff? Very inspirational. You know, going, going back to what we were saying, you know, you like your alone time. Do you feel lonely ever? In situations, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I mean, li yeah, yeah. Because if it, I feel like, not that anyone would relate, it's just no one would have the right advice, or I didn't look at it that way, or I, I just obviously didn't. And maybe it's also it goes down the line of like I don't really talk about my feelings. Okay, so it's lon it's it's the loneliness of of someone not understanding you. Yeah, which is really weird because like I'm. I like I lived alone at one point here in mm -hmm. LA for a year and that was like so boring. So I do like to talk. Mm -hmm. Um I guess but when it comes to emotions it's mm -hmm. like but I also like I I like I think I like talking about emotions and stuff like that. Like yeah. why not? You know, you said you aren't the best with communicating. 
you know, and expressing your feelings. And that's like really important in a relationship. Do you ever feel, you know, like in your relationship with Chelsea that like diminishes your self-love a little bit? Um, yeah, sometimes. But that's good. That's good. That's what you want in a relationship. Um, because you guys know Chelsea. She, she'll, she'll call it out, right? Um, I want people like that in my life. Like, I you want honestly... A, you want a no man, not a yes man. Yeah. Yeah, Chelsea's a no man. Yeah. No, <laughs> she's uh, a no man. Shout she, out to Chelsea. <laughs> she's just very good at, like, telling yeah. me, like, hey, you did this. Did you notice that you did that? Like, you're not really expressing yourself, like, because mm -hmm. we've talked about it. Um... And I'm like, oh shit, you're right, because like, I'm bad at it, mm -hmm. so I need help. So I'm glad that she kind of points it out. I, I I guess that's the answer to that one. Like, it it does help me. Like, she helps me a lot. I think self love goes hand in hand with um, um, like awareness. Mm -hmm. Uh, and once you like have like accomplished all that in your head, and you know exactly how you are. You're kind of like undefeatable. So. Yeah, you want you want people in your life that like challenge you, like why the like yeah you know that's like a simple answer. Okay, so before we end, I actually have a question that I locked in from something we talked about a little before, mm -hmm. and it was you know when we we're talking about you know friends and you giving yourself a lot to people. Do you ever feel like you are ever getting taken advantage of, and you know if you are, I guess how do you deal with it? Is it, is that where you like retract from that and? Um, do people take advantage of me? I'm assuming, yeah. There's no way that I've went through my entire life helping Without everyone someone take that advantage. no one did take advantage. Um, is it easy to spot? Yes, I I would say in some instances. Okay. So you can so you can spot easy it. Easy done. Huh? Okay. Yeah, so you can easy spot to spot. It. Usually tend to like keep the people that I know that aren't around me. Mm -hmm. um, plus, everything's like so like in life, everything's so. Um, uh, it's like a it's like a big trade. Yeah. Um, you know, like I, I don't want to give myself my all to someone mm -hmm. if they're not giving me some reciprocal back in yeah, a sense, yeah. you know. Like um, when something's just like one sided. Yeah, that's draining. Um so I look at it that way. Uh I don't think it takes away from my like loving myself or like my mental health or any of that. Okay. You know, the only thing the only thing I would say is like I do have a problem with saying no and stuff, so I'll put a lot of things on my plate and then sometimes it gets overwhelming. I mean, you then out. I'm like stressed a little bit and I'm like, damn it, I should have just said no. They would have still Yeah. They, you just didn't want to disappoint them. wouldn't really them. have cared if I said no or I can't do it this time, you know. Do you think you say yes to everything because you're afraid of disappointing people or do you think you just say yes because you think you can handle it? Maybe I'm scared of disappointing people. Interesting. Maybe. Maybe you're like I'm not sure. <laughs> not that I can't handle it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I got to I got to it's another thing of juggling because life is balance. Mm -hmm. And once you start balancing everything, your life gets so much better. Um, but I got to remember that like me time, quote unquote, is also like I'm putting in the work for myself. Mm -hmm. So I, it is important to like block off an hour or two mm -hmm. just for yourself. Gather your thoughts. Like you can't just be doing things back to back to back to back to back. You'll yeah, tire yourself out. Yeah, you got to like breathe for a um, second. I'm, I do I go off on tangents? I have no <laughs> idea what, the, what I'm saying. No, I think everything you're saying is making sense. I feel like I can see you having like a conversation in your head already. If that makes sense, like you'll be talking and I'm then trying you, to explain it, and then you go like this, and then you're like this, and then you go like that, and I'm like, I think he's like, like I'm trying to explain <laughs> myself. No, but it, it all makes sense. Yeah, my therapist says I'm good at compart compartment compartmentalizing. Compa compartmentalizing. <laughs> compartmentalizing. Like. Mm. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Do you love yourself? I do, but not 100%. Does anyone love yourself 100%? I think so, yeah. Yeah? Probably, yeah, somewhere in this world. I think my, yeah, because the challenge is to find. Those are the people that accept everything that comes with it. You can't have good without the bad. So like all in all, like, do you love like you love yourself? It's like it's kind of like a yes. That's my, uh, I guess that's my challenge with this show, right? To find the one person that loves themselves a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I I'm, I'm in love with the process for sure. All right. Well, JC, our conversation is coming to an end. But before, you know, I end, 
my show, I always ask my guests if they have any, you know, sort of advice or any, you know, wise words to anyone maybe struggling with, you know, self-love issues or lacking in confidence. Uh, try everything. Um, find out what you like and then just keep doing that over and over and over again. And then things will just happen. And be a good person, obviously. Those two things would be all right. So you're a big advocate on if you find what you love to do, just go f full full throttle in it. Mm -hmm. And if you fail, um, yeah, you're doing, you're doing it good. You're doing it right. Because you know, everyone fails. Before they succeed. Yeah, and if you don't like doing that eventually, then it's never too late to like switch up. That's also good advice is even if you fail, doesn't mean that you actually failed. It probably means that you're that much closer to succeeding. Yeah, it, you're, it means you're leveling up. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Well, thank you, JC, for being on Over the Surface. And I really love this conversation. Me too. We should have more conversations we like this. We should just grab coffee and just talk about life. We will. <laughs> I normally am drinking a glass of wine, but I had to do coffee today. It was 1030 in the morning. I couldn't do it. Sober, sober thoughts. Sober thoughts. Sober twenty. Wonder what this interview would have been like if we were both drunk. I probably would have started to cry. <laughs> do it part two soon. Season two. Season two. Season two. Everyone's just season hammered two, doing this. I have this. to be drunk out of my mind. Oh man! Or we that, have to take three <clears> shots be before fun. getting on here. That would be fun. I like talking a lot. That Thank you, fun. JC. I didn't want that to end. Really? Mm -mm. Aww. It like closes. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it ends. The Looney Tunes like <laughs> buy out. I didn't want it to end. All right. Bring it in. Oh, are we hugging? Yeah. Oh, nice hug. Nice hug. Nice friend and Jay hug. Friend and Jay. Friends for how long? Seven years? Shit, it feels longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> I needed to be like this big shining bright star because people were going to parties, people were going out to clubs and drinking and doing all these things. And growing up, I was never into that, but like living here and doing YouTube, I was more of like, okay, I need to follow what's cool, who's yeah. cool. So you really found yourself love kind of recently. Would you say then when you were younger, because when you were younger, you were trying to chase something, trying to fit in, you were getting picked on, you didn't feel the greatest about yourself. I don't not love myself. There are parts of me that I want to fix. There are parts of me mm -hmm. that like I regret, unfortunately. So you so you got bullied for it. So they kind of picked, they picked on you a little bit. Yeah, for just being like that YouTube, YouTube kid, kid. But maybe that's another reason why I left school. Yeah.